When learning about the nervous system, it is important to understand how neurons are formed. We should know that we all start off as one simple cell after our father's sperm fuses with our mother's egg. But what happens after that is less known by most people and is pretty amazing. Our one cell begins to duplicate itself through mitosis and split into other identical cells. This process keeps happening until we are now a small cluster of cells called a blastula. It's important to note that at this point, none of our cells are differentiated yet, meaning we have no specific cell types like neurons, muscle cells, or bones. All of the cells just exist without any differentiated function. As we continue to develop, the cells begin to fold and create three different layers. These layers, called ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, begin to form tissues that later become the different systems of the body. For example, the innermost layer of cells, the endoderm, get differentiated into what will become the intestines in the body as part of our internal digestive system. Now, why is this all important? We need to understand these layers to comprehend how our nervous system is created, which we will see in the following slide. During the gastrulation phase of development, the mesoderm cells in the middle get differentiated to create a structure called the notochord, which is depicted here. Once the notochord is formed, it signals ectoderm cells above it to fold and create a structure called the neural tube. This entire process is called neurulation. This image is a zoomed in picture of the process. The notochord signals the ectoderm cells to differentiate into the neural plate, which then folds in on itself, creating this structure called the neural tube. Once developed, this neural tube will elongate and become the brain and spinal cord. While these neural crest cells, which were also once part of the ectoderm, developed to form the components of the peripheral nervous system. The body protects the developing neural tube, which turns into the brain and spinal cord, by placing hard bones around it. These bones develop separately and at different times, making up most of the skull and the vertebrae. If the bones of the vertebrae do not develop correctly and leave gaps, an individual can be born with a condition called spina bifida. This can lead to having either neural tissue or cerebrospinal fluid protrude out of the gap. Leaving part of your spinal cord unprotected can be very dangerous, as these nerve cells are the main connection between the brain and peripheral nervous system. If the case of spina bifida is very severe, surgery must be done to fix it. Neurons are initially produced by cell differentiation in the neural tube. This occurs because the neural tube contains multipotent neural stem cells that can differentiate to form different types of cells that create and support the nervous system. If the cell is programmed to become a neural progenitor, it can then continue to develop into a common neuron. If the stem cell, on the other hand, is programmed to become a glial progenitor, it will then generate different types of glial cells that support the nerve cells in carrying out their function. Both types of cells are essential for the proper workings of the nervous system. As neurons are maturing, they migrate or move to find their final position to create the correct circuitry that the body needs. There are two different ways that neurons can reach their destination. The first method of movement is done through somal translocation. This is when the neuron forms an extension off of the cell body and pulls itself to its desired location, which is depicted here. In this image, you can see the soma of the neuron translocating along the path of the extension. Additionally, the second type of movement is called glial guidance, which is where immature neurons use glial cells as scaffolds to move to their final destination. This image depicts an immature neuron using the scaffolding of the glial support cells to move its way up. When the cell has found its position, the axon also grows to make a connection to the dendrite of another neuron. A structure called an axon growth cone is guided by chemical signals telling the axon which way it needs to grow to navigate to its connection point. This is important because some axons end up being very long. Without a chemical signal to lead its path, it is likely that the axon would never find the next neuron to connect to. When neurons are developing, they form multiple synapses with their target cells. As you can see in this picture, 
These two neurons have multiple synaptic points to increase the signal strength that is passed from neuron 2 to neuron 1. This idea is very important because the synaptic connections between neurons that do not get used often do not get maintained by the cells and are eventually eliminated from the neural network. This phenomenon is called neural pruning and truly validates the statement, if you don't use it, you lose it. Interestingly, the brain has a way of rewiring itself as individuals change and process new experiences over time. This moldable feature of the human brain is described as neuroplasticity. This enables individuals to reinforce certain connections in their brain through learning or to help mend areas of the brain that have been damaged. Overall, the pathways of your brain that you consistently use will be strong with neural connections, and the other unused pathways will be cut from the system. This is how your brain continues to change its connections over a lifetime. A stroke is described as the sudden death of brain cells in a specific area. This usually occurs when blood flow is stopped or blocked to that part of the brain. This image shows an area where brain cells were damaged due to a stroke. But, as we learned on the last slide, neuroplasticity can build new neural connections if parts of the brain are damaged. When this happens, another healthy, undamaged part of the brain can take over the lost function of the damaged region. This is not true for every situation, but some people recover to a great extent due to neural reorganization through plasticity.